This is going to be a short video on exam answering techniques. I'm using IGCSE Edexcel Biology Paper 1B from May 2014. I'm just going to go through the first question. As always, make sure you read every last word in the question because there will be clues hidden away there. So even if you're not sure, you might be able to scoop up some extra marks. So question 1A, the table contains names and descriptions of processes involved in the digestive system. Complete the table by filling in the missing names and descriptions. So as I might expect with question 1, this is kind of a fact factual recall type of question is checking to see if you've actually learned stuff. Um, as always try and be really technical with your answers so in the first row the description of the process is food enters the mouth so don't write eating here you need to write the word ingestion. Digestion is the name of the process so we need to provide a description so that's going to be the definition of digestion which is the breakdown of large insoluble molecules into small soluble ones and you need, kind of need to get all those words in there to get the mark. Next part, small food molecules move from, move from the small intestine into the blood, so that's going to be absorption. Quite straightforward, that question. The next part is slightly trickier because they're saying small food molecules are used to build large molecules, and that word you need there, the word you need there is assimilation. And finally, ingestion, not to be confused with excretion. Remember, excretion is the removal of waste products of metabolism. However, ingestion is basically, to be really crude, pooing, but you can't write that. So you need to write the removal of feces, because that's the posh word for poo, and you need to say where it happens, and you need to write the removal of feces from the anus. And looking at the mark scheme, it's always good to look at mark schemes to have an idea of what they're looking for. They've underlined from the anus, so you have to write that part in order to get the mark. You have to be really, really precise. So the next part of the question, it's a bit longer, it's worth three marks. Describe the process of digestion in the mouth. So take a step back and think about the two processes which happen in the mouth. And there's a physical part and a chemical part. So the physical part, you would write physical digestion involves chewing using the teeth. So that's the first part of the question answered. The second part, you need to talk about chemical digestion, which means enzymes. So what you want to write here is the enzyme amylase breaks down starch into glucose. And there's, believe it or not, a mark for writing amylase, a mark for writing starch, and a mark for writing glucose. So, crazily, you could have really got all three marks by just writing three words. And that's what you find all over again in science, is that you really don't have to be an amazing kind of English person in order to do really well in science because that's not really what they're testing. They're testing your understanding. Moving on to part C. A student carried out some food tests on two samples of food A and B. The table shows the results. So again, this is quite in-depth knowledge because it needs it's testing to see if you know your food tests. We're looking at two sorts of food tests, one involving iodine and one involving Benedict. So I know automatically that iodine is involved in testing for starch because of what I've learned previously, um, and Benedict is involved in checking for the presence of glucose. So, the student concluded that both samples of food contain carbohydrates. Do you agree with this conclusion? Yes, I do. Why? Because I know that A is starch because it turned blue-black, so I'm going to write yes because sample A is starch, and then for part B, again yes because Benedict has turned brick-red, which is a positive result for glucose. And glucose and starch are both examples of carbohydrates, so that's what you're going to write. So that is kind of quite tricky, because it needs you to know both the positive and negative results of both of these food tests, and the fact that starch and glucose are both carbohydrates. Right, I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to send me your questions if you want me to voice over answering them, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!